Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So I read something today that I absolutely must share with you guys because I really need your opinions. What I read gave me a bunch of mixed feelings from shock, joy, fear, and distrust all in one. Today we're going to be talking about a bill that was introduced that should theoretically help small businesses with the costs that they face. And for truckers, it's of course diesel prices. To be quite honest, right off the bat, I have a really bad feeling about what I read, but I really want to see if I'm the only one or if someone shares in my opinion. So let's chat about it. Ready? Let's go. So on September 17th, two senators introduced the Helping Small Businesses Thrive Act, which according to Landline is a bill that aims to create uh, a program which might help reduce the small business owner's exposure to price volatility of certain commodities, including diesel prices. I should say right off the bat, this was a bipartisan bill. Basically, this bill would give small businesses a chance to lock in commodity prices and the two commodities that are guaranteed to be on the bill are diesel and gasoline. The rest is to be decided by the SBA. So how would it work? Well, there would be two options for small businesses. The first is called the Futures Purchase Agreement, which would, and I quote, allow the SBA to establish and maintain the direct cost of a commodity. The second option, which is more applicable to the trucking industry, is called the Call Option Purchase Agreement agreement, which would protect any business if a commodity price were to increase by over 10%. So in order to explain this, let's take a hypothetical situation that Landline offers. You have a trucking company, and one of the things that scares you most, because again, fuel is one of the highest expenses of any trucking company, is the fact that there is uncertainty surrounding diesel prices. So now you have an option to enter into an agreement with the government to lock in diesel prices prices at $3.50 per gallon six months from now for a thousand gallons, which means that you know that for those 1,000 gallons, you are going to be paying a set price of $3,500. Now let's say six months from now, the diesel prices skyrocket to $5 per gallon. Well, in that case, you still pay the $5,000 for that 1,000 gallons at the pump, but then you receive a kind of reimbursement check from the government for $1,500 because you agreed that for those 1,000 gallons, you're paying $3,500. So on the surface of it, if you're not reading between the lines or if you don't have this feeling of distrust that I do, you're going to say that this is fantastic because, and I understand that, because as carriers, as trucking industry professionals, one of our biggest fears is the uncertainty and one of our biggest expenses is fuel and diesel, right? So when uncertainty is paired with the highest expense of your operations, of course, you feel like if you can pre-plan and you know exactly what you're going to be paying for diesel, it makes you feel a little bit safer. But, and there is a big but, when you realize that it's a subsidy from a government, you can't help but wonder. Number one, where are they getting the money? And number two, why are they doing this? The fact that I do not trust the government is pretty clear. It's a learned um, behavior. I stopped trusting the government. Now, if you're one of those people who thinks that the government has your best interest at heart unconditionally, I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm just telling you things as I see them. So please bear with me. So let's quickly talk about subsidies. What is a government subsidy? Well, it's when the government tries to kind of remove a burden via direct cash or tax breaks or something like reimbursements. But what subsidies do is they turn a free market, something that was a free market, into a mixed market where the market no longer dictates who survives and who does not. But there's something else that we have to be aware of when it comes to subsidies. And for that, we have to look at our history, the Great Depression. Back then, the government set a floor on agricultural products and actually paid the farmers in order 
were not to produce. So the farmers were more or less okay. But what happened was the supply of food went down, but the demand was still there. What happens when there is low supply and high demand? Well, the prices start skyrocketing. So people who were buying that food were paying more for that food than they would have if there was no subsidy. And that means that the standard of living, of course, went down. So now let's go back to our two main questions. Why is the government interested in doing this for energy prices, right? And number two is where are they getting the money? And the easiest thing to do is first talk about where is the money actually coming from? The simple answer is taxes. So right now, the thing I can compare it to the federal farm subsidy is costing American taxpayers $163 billion. So for those who think that government officials are actually going to reach into their pocket and give them their money to you, unfortunately, you are sorely mistaken. Usually that money comes from you and every single taxpayer in the United States. The number two question, and this is the one I struggled to write because I hate being a conspiracy theorist, but you know what? I'll have to be in this video. And just remember, it is a conspiracy theory, but it's just a theory. The question is, what is the motivation? What is motivating the government to do this? And why are they focusing particularly on gasoline and diesel? Now I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. I guess that's the best word to use it. The devil's advocate here for just a moment. Number one, a subsidy when it comes to energy means what? Well, it means that we consumers, right? And small businesses in terms of trucking, we get to save money, but the energy companies are still getting paid. It doesn't mean that they are getting paid less. So if we are saving money purchasing the same thing, but the energy company is still making money, that means that the demand is going to remain strong for that product. So could that, and I'm posing this as a question because I'm trying to be very careful with these conspiracy theories, could that mean that energy companies now have the option to increase their prices to to Wazoo knowing full well that the demand is going to be strong and that they are going to still get paid because the demand from the consumer or the business side is going to be propped up by the fact that the government is now reimbursing those consumers. Does that make sense? And number two, we know that there is a pretty huge push for electric trucks, for example, in our industry. Will this type of subsidy result in some kind of argument for a future political agenda. For example, a political candidate can say something like, we have subsidized this and that, and this energy subsidy has cost American taxpayers an X amount or X billion dollar amount. So we should start looking into a new form of energy and really start pushing for it. Again, I'm just being a conspiracy theorist here. I'm trying to tread very carefully, I suppose. I um, I just want to remind you guys that these are theories, right? And these theories come from the fact that good intentions when they come from the government is something that I do not trust and possibly it has to do with how I grew up. To me, it sounds like a long con to be quite honest. But now I want to give you guys the opportunity to share your opinions because this is something that I would be very interested in reading. Maybe some of you will completely change my mind about what I think. Maybe some of you will make me more confident in my conspiracy theory. So again, I would love to hear what you think about this potential kind of government intervention in energy costs, right? Saving businesses from volatile costs of certain commodities. What do you think about it? What do you think this means? Do you trust it? Do you think it's just good intentions trying to prop uh, businesses up and trying to make small businesses more competitive? What do you guys think? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me and watching this <laughs> video. I'm very curious to read your opinions because I really want to see whether I am the only one who is that cuckoo bananas who would think what I thought in terms of the conspiracy theory. Wishing you all a fantastic rest of your week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning. See you in the next video.